The horsemen took your land. They drove your people into the hills to scratch a living off rocks. Take back the lands they stole from you. Hey guys, and welcome back to Lord of the Rings Theory. In today's episode, we'll explore the feud between Dunland and Rohan, which leads to the Dunlanding's alliance with Saruman during the War of the Ring. The folk from Dunland were a remnant of the peoples that had dwelt in the vales of the White Mountains in past ages. They were a secret folk, unfriendly to other men and races. The conflict began around 500 years prior to the War of the Ring before Rohan was a sovereign nation. Around the time of the 21st century of the Third Age, men led by Frugmir dwelt in North Middle-earth where the Grey Mountains met the Misty Mountains. The men, known as the Eothed, arrived there after the fall of Angmar where the Wish King once ruled. Since their region neighboured Angmar, they had to drive off disbanded forces of orcs. They colonised the area and settled for five centuries before they sought to migrate to larger plains which could host their rising population. Unfortunately for the Dunlendings, this is when they are deprived of their land and driven into the hills to scratch a living off rocks. <laughs> before they were robbed of their area, the Dunlendings dwelt in a land known as Kalin Ardhorn during the second millennium of the Third Age. Kalin Ardhorn was located south of Fangorn Forest and east of Isengard. Laying between Gondor and its twin city Arnord, the Dunlendings had voyaged there opportunistically after the Great Plague since the previous population was decimated from the epidemic. Since Gondor had maintained the north-south road which connected their two realms, they proclaimed the territory as their own, and they gifted the land to Errol the Young, the son of the previously mentioned Frugmar, and the first king of Rohan. Errol had led his people to the aid of Gondorian troops in the Battle of Celebrant. As a reward, Gondor offered Kalin Arhorn to the Eothed of Errol. Kalin Arnhord was hence known as Rohan, and the Dunlendings that had dwelt there were driven back by order of the mighty Gondor to whence they came, Dunland. The Battle of Celebrant is an interesting story which I will cover for you in the near future. Fast forward to the War of the Ring and we witness the Dunlendings allying with Saruman and conducting war with Rohan. I hope now we comprehend a little context in understanding why the wild men were irate with the horsemen. Saruman had used their resentment to his advantage, manipulating the wild men of Dunland to do his bidding in Isengard's war against Rohan. This began long ago, before Saruman's treason was apparent, by playing on their hatred for those who had taken what was rightfully theirs. The Dunlandings began to trouble Rohan again during the reign of Théoden's father, Thengil, with the Rohirrim not realising that these attacks from Dunland were being orchestrated from Saruman. During the War of the Ring, the White Wizard had contacted the Dunlandings via messengers, and he hosted a magnitude of these wild men in his quarters of Isengard. Playing on their emotions, he convinced them that they could reclaim the land that was taken five centuries ago. They were told that the Rohirrim had burned their captives alive. Along with additional propaganda, the Dunlendings furiously marched from Isengard to destroy the villages of Rohan. Participating in the Battle of Helm's Deep, many of them perished, and those that survived were afraid and had given themselves up. Crying for mercy, they were spared by the Rohirrim and granted leniency in their surrender, they seized their weapons, aided Rohan in rebuilding their wall, and aiding them in the tiding of the battlefield, as well as promising to never wage any kind of war or attack on Rohan again. They were surprised at the mercifulness of the Rohirrim. After Saruman's words, 
Their ambition of reclaiming the land of Rohan, where they once dwelt, was at an end. However, in the following decades after the War of the Ring, they were granted into the reunited kingdom of Middle-earth. I hope you enjoyed the story of Dunland's alliance with Isengard. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you wish to further support the channel, be sure to check out the merch shop. As always, my Middle-earth friends, hard on for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Lord of the Rings Theory. Embrace the power of the ring, or embrace your own destruction. Renewed shall be blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king.